debated whether I should install one, but thought for this, yeah, just in the interest of getting it out there to you know yeah. in the next day or two to just do something that was free and easy. Um, yeah, and it would be great to move it into the into the OSE mailer at some point. Can you hear me okay? I don't think I my headphones are. Working. I think it's yeah, yeah. the microphone. Computer. You're fine. Um, okay. But let's see. Let's find out. Um, let me look at. So, uh, can you? Let me look at my calendar. So, Samuel, let me see. I mean, just email him real quick to make sure he's okay. on the same page. Um, okay. Um, so let me just email him, make sure he can get on this. If not, I'll tell him to. Um, so again, back to how is your June twenty second looking? Because it's looking good on my side. Just talk to Cary Academy on the East Coast. Uh, there's Pacific Ridge High School in San Diego, and then the Seattle Academy of Arts and Sciences. And it's looking to go forward. They're they're all moving forward. So um, you're still good for that. Well, or is I'm. That I'm afraid I probably shouldn't, I should not commit to that entire nine days. I'm afraid okay. um, with the harvest season, like I've explained, that uh, I'm going to be available um, somewhat. I would be, I would be comfortable saying that like the first two or three days, like the 22nd, maybe through the 25th, like when the intense build and a lot of the hands-on, you know, early learning is going on, I could probably be available for that. For the four days? Yeah, for the three D okay. printer build and the, like you know the power some of the original early power electronics stuff. Yeah. Um, but okay. I just the spring has been a little warmer already than quite a bit warmer than last year. Yeah. So I'm I'm afraid, you know, that's a, just a that's like the one major commitment that I made you know a while ago. Okay. That, and remind you know, me that again. So that's at, that place. Um, what is the place you're working there in the summer? Uh, it's called Active Berry Packers, and it's a it's a um, uh, ammonia-based freezing plant where we freeze uh, mostly raspberries and some blueberries. Okay. Oh, okay. And, no, no, no problem. Yeah. So we'll we'll work yeah. around that. So what it's gonna look like? We might have to, we might have more people available. Yeah, I mean we're building up the team, so we'll, we shouldn't have a problem. Uh, we've got William, and then the two other guys, Chris and Michelle, myself, and then Julia, and probably one or two more people are gonna appear by that time. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll work it out. The other thing I was going to mention is if you need someone close by to quality control or check the shipping, the stuff that's shipped like a week ahead of time, like I'm totally open to, to go down there on a, on a day and run through all of the stuff you shipped and just make sure it's all there. And okay. that way you have that week lead time and you don't have to get someone from farther away to do that. Mm -hmm. um, if the school can't do that or if you want a second set of eyes on it. Yeah, well, I mean... If you were to do the first four days, I would ship the stuff to you then, to your house, oh, no? That'd be even better, yeah. yeah. And then for sure I can do that. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like the timing of that. I watched the um, the call you had um, yesterday, and it sounds like the timing with all this advance notice is going to make it a lot more manageable. Definitely. Definitely. Well, let's see what's ha happening with Sam. Uh, I don't know. I'm not hearing anything back. Um... Oh, there it is. Let's see. Uh, can you hear us? Hi, Sam. Is that you? Yes, it's me. Sorry. It seems like our uh, firewall is uh, not really going to be allowing me to do the web conference. <laughs> I see. I see. Uh, so Jeremy's on the call. Jeremy, can you hear us too? I can hear you guys. Um, all right. Okay. Um, Sam, is there another video like a Zoom or anything else that you have that you, you can do the video with? or? 
Uh, Zoom has worked. I don't know. I've actually, I've only ever joined from our school network to Zoom conferences. Okay. So let me see if I could quickly. Uh, and would Google Hangouts work work for you as well? Yeah, Google Hangouts should okay, work maybe. fine as well. Okay, let, let me send you a quick link there so that that should work as well. So you got the WebRTC, Google Hangout. Okay, so if you guys wanna join this one, so Sam and Jeremy, Okay, just sent you a link on email to the Google, or I'll put in the chat for you, Jeremy, there as well. Okay, there you go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. fast. All right, I'll open that up and close this one. Yep. Oh, there we go. Excellent, excellent. Um, All right, Sam. Sam, you go by Sam or Samuel or? No, Sam. Sam. Okay, excellent. So you're you're at Harbor, sorry, Friday Harbor High School. Yeah, Friday Harbor, Washington, kind of small island just off the coast of Anacortes. Probably so it's an hour-long ferry to get here, okay. and then we're probably an hour south of Bellingham. Excellent. Uh, you yeah. mind if I record this for the rest of our team to view? Oh, no, not at all. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so so what? Uh, where do we take this discussion here? Um, so we have the Steam Camp program. We're, we're getting that kicked off and running in multiple locations at the same time. We've got our next event actually March 14th through the 17th. So that's... <clears throat> we were considering whether... You are your timing works with that, but I mean, we, we I, I know that's very early, but we'd like to see if what we can do uh, with collaborating with you and what your interests are, uh, how many students you would have, and so forth. And if you've seen the actual announcement to see the, the nature of the program, yeah. So, yeah, uh, I got forwarded the email about the camp, uh, I mentioned from my students. Uh, the tricky part for me, otherwise I would try to go, is that's actually, we're finishing up a new principal search, uh -huh. and then uh, that's also the state STEM CTE conference in Wenatchee, Washington. Uh -huh. So I'm going to be in Wenatchee with all the other STEM directors from across the state. Um, so unfortunately I wouldn't be able to make the belly ham. But we actually have had, uh, so we're a pretty small school, 240 students at the high school. Uh -huh. um, and what we've been fortunate, uh, it's only my fourth year, I'm, I'm the newer teacher here, but have inherited a lot of responsibilities, one of which is we have a full STEM center, uh, separate building from the high school. So I have a full CNC machine, uh, auto body area, wood shop area, we have a computer lab, Mac lab, 3D printers, laser cutters. Uh, so we've got a lot of cool tech, and we've been slowly rebuilding the CTE STEM program here. Um, and it's been nice because we actually do have a pretty amazing community and an amazing amount of community, community support. So at the beginning of the year, I was actually given kind of a huh. small chunk of money with the, with the directive of find opportunities for advanced student learning that we would normally not have. And so when I saw the flyer come across, I was like, well, that kind of fits the bill. So, yeah. you know, the, the us maybe be able to host one here. Uh, and one thing you know I've been talking about with other teachers on the islands would be, you know, even if we could open this up to Orcas Island, Shaw, Lopez, kind of, because we have the building, and I'd love to be able to kind of start having more events where we can bring students from other islands here for these kind of things. We've had one-off things, we actually had a pretty cool thing two years ago, where we had um, a couple representatives from the Lummi uh, tribe, uh, First Nations, who held a traditional new building workshop here at the STEM building 
and kind of talked about how they use their traditional methods of modern technology to build these kind of beautiful voyaging canoes. And we had all the students from all over the island come for that. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. The hard part of that one is it wasn't repeatable. Yeah. The thing that kind of really excited me about the steam camp here is the idea that this could be a repeatable thing that we do year in and year out and become to be expected by our student population across the islands. Yeah, that's excellent. Do you have a teacher that, would you be the teacher that would be, uh, get like, would you like to get trained to actually run those yourself or would you see us doing that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think for the first one, I'd be happy to let you guys do it, but if that was an option for me to yeah. get trained, you know, to run these myself, that probably be easier on you guys and having to, you know, yeah. come out to the islands. <laughs> Although it's quite nice to visit, so if you want to, you're more than welcome. But, yeah, yeah I mean, the more we can be self-sustainable here, the better. Um, kind of our big hurdle is always access. You know, we students can't really go into Seattle for weekend opportunities, whether it's in science or STEM or stuff like that. So we've been working really hard. We do have a pretty supportive community, especially when it comes to STEM. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the engineering group Luxel. No. But they produce, they produce the gold film that you see on satellites and NASA vehicles. And mm -hmm. randomly, they happen to be based here in Friday Harbor. So we've got aerospace, we've got uh, STEM in a really meaningful way here, but we don't really have, in my opinion, enough opportunity for our students just yet. Yeah. What's the company called? Luxel. L-U-X-E-L. Okay. Yeah. Do you have other STEM teachers in your school, or are you the guy? <laughs> um, for right now, I'm the guy. Uh, I'm working on it. We actually have, um, I keep joking that our English teacher is just pretending to be an English teacher and is really a STEM teacher. We have an aerospace team. Uh, NASA has an annual competition uh, called the NASA uh, Aerospace Design Challenge, where they issue a challenge every year for students to design uh, usually some sort of space habitat or challenge. So last year was the build habitat on Mars. This year is a Aldrin cycler that will cycle from Mars to Earth, picking up and dropping off supplies. And our small school managed to be part of the international winning team at NASA in Florida last year. Oh, wow. um, so we actually, we were, we're working, he's new, he actually started the same year I did. So we're working really hard to kind of build up that STEM culture here at the school. Because we have the STEM center, because we have the community support, we're hopeful that we're going to get there. Yeah. Are you a private school or a public school? Public school. So we're yep. uh, public, rural, um, not technically high need for the federal guidelines, but we're pretty close. And that's kind of the other piece of this that I'm curious to talk about is, you know, we, we, we are rural and we do have, um, our students are pretty limited financially in some cases, but, you know, that's why I have some money. I hopefully go find more. That's kind of the other half of the conversation I'd be curious to hear with from you guys, what the cost structure looked like for these kind of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so if we if we run a camp, what kind of a schedule are you looking at it? So would it be some uh, before the summer sometime or? Yeah, I was thinking April would kind of be the ideal target month in my mind. Um, most of my craziness ends in March. And so I've had some time in April to both trying to host this. And I was figuring maybe a two day camp, Saturday, Sunday, down the road, I would love to be able to host one of the full camps here in the islands for students from Orcas and all that. Like I said, I mean, the more I can bring these opportunities to these islands, the better, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I think for April, a, a two-day camp would be really ideal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could do the like the first two days of what we normally do huh. is is doing the three D printer build and then learning how to design in FreeCAD and collaborate. So that would be a pretty good thing. Um, how many people do you think we would get to show up at this? Um, I think that would honestly be cost dependent. If it was uh -huh. low cost, I think we would be turning people away. Um, and as the cost goes up, the number of people that we'd be able to get would go down. Mm -hmm. And would it be open to the community and the school, or would it be just the school's population? No, I, I, I like the idea of opening it to the community as well. I mean, I would want to make sure that maybe our students had priority or got early registration options, but um, uh -huh. we're pretty big about wanting to involve our community and give them those opportunities. Yeah, yeah. What's the entire population of the island there? Uh, so during winter right now, we're just about 6,000, I believe. And then in summer, we tend to jump up to like 
six hundred thousand. It feels like. <laughs> yeah. What's what's what happens there? A lot of vacation homes or. Yeah, so we, I mean, our economy is pretty much 98%, and that's not an exaggeration, tourist driven. So uh, we've uh, got a lot of whale watching, kayaking, summer vacation rentals. Um, I mean, nearly all my students are employed in the service industry in the summer. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. So sometime uh, April for a two day, two day thing. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so Jeremy, we could probably discuss what that would look like. I mean, probably Jeremy would be a person to do it. Uh, Jeremy, do you have other thoughts or questions? Or? No, I think uh, most of the weeks in April, uh, especially if it's a weekend, they're looking. They look fine for me. Um, I've spent time in the islands, so I'm very comfortable getting out to San Juan, especially. Um, it's probably the easiest one to get to, and. <laughs> I think the lead up is there's enough time to do some marketing, especially if we go towards the end of April. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about it. Yeah, I think the end of April will be absolutely perfect because that would give me enough time to really kind of reach out to you know our community groups that tend to pick up on this stuff. The libraries pretty uh -huh. quick to advertise these kind of opportunities as well. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. Um, What would you say the like the, the capacity you have for uh, teams or builds as far as like number of participants we can have at your site? Um, I'd say it's pretty large. I mean, we have the workshop is probably a couple thousand square feet, and then the classroom side is a couple thousand square feet as well. I have ten. Uh, kind of workbench style tables in each side um, that we can always increase that so we can I mean potentially we have enough for if each table would build probably 20 groups plus um, I, okay. I think builds are large enough we can actually frankly hit two groups per build or two groups per table so I mean I would pretty be comfortable with a hundred people in this space oh I don't know if that's probably larger than most of these workshops I would yeah. assume in which case we could we would need a couple of instructors, but I mean we could probably we could probably do that. Uh, it wouldn't be yeah. an issue at this point. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know. Do you do you have any other questions on how how we operate and the goals for this? Because I mean our focus is uh, we we like to try try to run the steam camps with multiple locations, so we're collaborating and design. Now, for a two-day workshop, that's fine. I mean, that's a, we were talking a lot about, okay, well, why don't we just do a couple-day workshops as well? So this is kind of a natural natural outcome. Um, but do you have any, any questions on other questions on anything that comes to your mind? Um, well, it's just it's interesting to see. I mean, you guys are pretty spread out, you know, internationally. And, um, I mean, as much as I would love to go to one of the workshops in New Zealand because that's one of my favorite places in the world, uh, it's just kind of curious, you know, and it, you actually kind of answered that already in terms of being able to perhaps access training where I would be able to host these down the road. But kind of yeah. what's the progression that you like to see when communities come on board? Is it, you know, workshop and then two camps the summer or one big camp in the summer? I mean, I would love to see a calendar where we could have a couple of these leading up to the big camp in summer in the future. Yeah, well, first of all, let me share a s schedule with you. I'll put it in the chat. But I mean, right now we're lining up events every single month so we're pursuing an aggressive schedule of putting one on all the time but that the answer to your question is depends on your interest and we're right now recruiting people uh, re recruiting additional instructors now as far as the the pathway for an instructor it would be to to first attend one or host one then get trained and then start running them either either with us or independently we're open to different options if you want to run it under the OSC brand, we can have one arrangement. Or if you want to go completely independent, we're we're also fine with that. Uh, our interest is getting as many people, many uh, teachers and schools collaborating. The vision would be let's open up the classroom to global, the global classroom where, say, you run in your STEM class, you would get on and there's like 12 other classes that you're actually solving a bigger problem. That's the kind of framework we'd like to create. So the that, short answer. That's actually yeah. one of our, and I quickly interrupt that because you, that's a big thing for us here. Um, our district has actually made that one of our principal missions. Um, just because being on the island, we do get some students where 
their worldview is pretty limited. So we've actually last year started to really look at trying to give more global awareness might be the best way to put it, but it was actually adopted by the school board. So mm. that's the kind of thing where I might have some other avenues to be able to support this from that auspice and that kind of framework around be able to show, well, not only are students getting this opportunity, but we also are meeting the district mission. So that's actually really good to hear. Yeah, that's excellent. And we're just trying to build that up. It really depends on getting enough schools interested in order to make that happen. So so the logistical part is, okay, well, what time, you know, when is your STEM class? What other schools have classes like that? So try to coordinate as much as we can. But at first we need some bodies on board to make that happen. But yeah. definitely interest interesting to us i started actually writing some notes at uh global let me show you global classroom initiative let me send you that link um so here's some initial notes i just wrote this down last week because because it totally this is we're all creating this making the road by walking here let me put in uh, the, the link there that's just something i wrote quickly um a few days ago where ideas that we get classrooms collaborating on and also on like I think the the unique feature for us it's we're trying to incorporate the entrepreneurship development so development of real products or projects that are uh, practically oriented for the common good and that's that's our explicit focus not like for example first robotics where you might just be building um, building robots here's you're building stuff and there's social vision beyond that too so, That's really cool. We've, uh, I've, yeah. I've shown my students just in some other context, the uh, Engineers Without Borders program um, and some of the work they've done to try and kind of put some of their challenges in context of real world improvements and how to actually some of these you know things that they think are just silly old school projects can actually have real world implications. Right. Uh, do you collaborate with some EWB groups? Uh, not yet. So I, actually, I have one student who's uh, in my advanced STEM class. They do kind of student driven projects. Uh, he's starting the collaboration process, looking at trying to do disaster relief and clean drinking water. So he started diving down that rabbit hole. Um, our second professor just started a couple of weeks ago. So he's just starting the literature review portion of his project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you have contacts with universities as well? or? Yeah, um, so University of Washington uh, is actually our main one, and we're lucky because we actually have the Friday Harbor Labs, oceanographic and uh, marine biological labs, literally a you know, half mile away from our school, um, and we're actually waiting, um, I should hear in a week or two, they are building and installing a underwater sensing system, um, and we just put in a grant request to be able to have students be part of that. And my hope is that students could actually be designing sensor nodes to attach to this underwater thing where they're building the sensors from scratch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's good. That's great. Um, that'd be something that if there are other schools, like in terms, in terms of the collaboration piece, I would love to be able to have other schools, you know, send us their designs. We build the sensors and install other schools' sensors onto this, this uh, package. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's. That's good. Good ideas. Um, so I just jump in here. I haven't made a couple notes. Um, you talked about funding and stuff for uh, maybe participants who may not be able to afford it. And you yeah. probably knew this, but we have, um, you know, we've encouraged like the two for one option in a lot of places where maybe two or three students group up together and they get one set of hardware that they then share between them once the camp is done. Um, we're very much open to the two for one idea because uh, it cuts the cost in half pretty quick. Um, you know, and if you got a couple friends or whatever, they can share that then share that hardware after the camp is over. Another group I spoke with a couple weeks ago was the Assistant League, Assistance League in Bellingham, and that's the Bellingham chapter of a national assistance group. And they offer um, scholarships to public high schools uh, for summer camps. And um, it's, it's like a, kids have to write a, an essay to apply, but they do hand out quite a bit of money every summer, and it was up to $900 per, uh, per student. So that was 
really big, um, you know, financial incentive to get a few students uh, into that. I don't know what the assistance league is in Skagit or Island County, um, but I know it's a national group, so there's probably other chapters. Okay, and we have a pretty uh, our Rotary um, Club is extremely well funded and supported. We also have the Seraphimists who uh, do a lot of work for supporting women in STEM here on the islands. Mm -hmm. uh, I've actually gone to them and they've been pretty quick to write some very um, supportive checks to us for that. Um, right. Especially if we're looking at end of April, there's a couple groups I'd probably go to, um, especially if, I mean, for a two-day workshop, if you yeah. give me a like, per participant cost, I can start working from that number. Yeah. Uh, One other comment I had was um, I talked with a college, like a college um, scholarship type group for one of the local high schools here. I talked to one of the members and they actually had a percentage of their uh, annual, you know, it was it was many hundreds of thousands of dollars annual scholarship fund that they allow students who are still searching for, you know, where they're going to go at the high school level to use some of that money. And that was something uh, she had mentioned as an option, too. I don't know what kind of foundations you guys work with over there, but um, I was kind of surprised to learn that, you know, yeah, that's their college scholarship type funds, but they also have a portion of their budget set aside for this sort of activities for for students who want to get exposure to the STEM, you know, skill set without before they actually commit to a college. Okay. What, Jeremy? What organization was that? Uh, that was for the Mount uh, the Mount Baker um, High School here in Whatcom County. Um, I talked to one of the members of their scholarship foundation. And that particular school offers those kinds of scholarships. Or yeah, they have their scholarship foundation indicated that they have a portion of the budget set aside to help assist high school students in finding or determining where they want to go. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of discretionary and up to them how they would how they would utilize that. But it was a large amount of money. I was I was just like, oh, it's good to know that that's out there, and maybe it's out there with other other groups as mm -hmm. well. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So I think probably. Um yeah, the next step would be maybe to think about the cost structure and what what we can offer and set the dates. Is there a date that's particularly favorable for you so we could maybe put it tentatively on a calendar? Um, I mean, if, if it works for Jeremy, I kind of liked his suggestion of maybe that last weekend in April, honestly, the 25th, 26th. Yeah, that'd be my ideal. The 19th and the tw uh, the 18th and the 19th isn't going to work for me, so the, the 25th and 26th would be ideal. Okay. Okay. That's great. Um, regarding, I, I think you mentioned, prof wait, professional development, is that something, uh, t tell me more about how professional development works at your school. Uh, so most of it for professional development, we actually, like I mentioned, we've got a really supportive community. So we have funds. Um, one of our local business owners actually has a pretty blank check policy for professional development in the district where we are able to send teachers to AP summer institutes every year. So we've actually, and especially for this, um, basically my other role in addition to being a full-time classroom teacher is I'm also the career and technical education director. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually have some funds from the state for anything that qualifies as CTE, PD, which STEM falls under that. So I actually have funds as well. So if I, I, know, I know personally, I would like to, you know, figure out how to get some of this professional development so that like we talked about maybe down the road in a year or two, um, I'd be able to start offering some of these camps for the island community. But in the meantime, you know, I can think of K-12, we have four science teachers that I would love to kind of get these skills in their hands. Yeah. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, what did you say, EPD? Did uh, you say? CTE. CTV? We do career, career and technical education. CTE. Is there anything we need to do or submit our curriculum or anything as well as to get that qualified? I've, I've received some confusion talk, talking with some of the CTE folks up here as to what would qualify and what wouldn't. Um, as far as I know, uh, no. Um, and that might just be because I'm a small district and I get to make the decisions. So, um, <laughs> no, but I'll double check. I think for, yeah, I, I want to say no, just because I know we've, I've been offering 
uh, STEM clock hours for some after school talks just because I'm STEM certified by virtue of me hosting a meeting. Teachers can claim that as STEM clock hours. But that's actually, I'll make sure that's the case. Um, okay. So it pretty much could run. vary by district then and based on district size and what their standards are. Yeah. That's good to know. That's probably where most of the confusion is coming from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, definitely, like, uh, we also have the a much more ambitious summer program. There's this three months of, of extreme design. We call it the summer of extreme design build. We also have, have the enterprise track. So if somebody actually wants to start a business running either steam camps or producing 3d printers or torch tables uh, we're actually doing that and so i think the initial step could be so let's do a steam camp and if but if anyone's uh, actually finds that compelling and you have a person that would actually want to participate for a deeper immersion we have that option as well in the summer so if you wanted to okay. get it going for well in the enterprise the track um we actually have an economic development council here in the island and one of their mm -hmm. missions is to empower the local people to start businesses oh, so yeah. i might mention to them the existence of that enterprise track and i'm sure they could probably come up with funds so that if someone applies to them saying hey i'd really like to you know start building 3d printers on the island they mm -hmm. would probably be able to fund their participation in the enterprise track Wow, uh, is that uh, so? What's that called? The Enterprise Development Council. It's called the uh, economic, yeah, the EDC, the Economic San Juan Island, or I think actually San Juan County Economic Development Council. Excellent. Um, so we should probably, yeah. Um, do you, you know that some of the people on on there, or do you have a link? Yeah. Um, as I say, if you want, I could actually just uh, email you the director's contact. Her name is Victoria Compton. And they are always looking for these kinds of opportunities. Um, they hosted a, a fiber optic training for anyone in the community that was interested in maybe thinking about, you know, be able to run and maintain fiber optics. They do some electronics. Um, they've done a lot of cool stuff with kind of 21st century skills, primarily targeted at like community members kind of just out of college or younger people who are looking to do career switching and get into kind of high demand fields, mm -hmm. which this definitely qualifies as that. Yeah, excellent. Well, excellent. So, yeah, if you can uh, put us in touch. I mean, yeah, um, opportunities are there. So probably the best thing is um, come up with a proposal or just maybe maybe feedback to you on, on a more specific route that we think that would work and see if we can collaborate with you to see if anyone we can find anyone from the island who's, who's interested in the enterprise aspect. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Jeremy, anything else you got or any, anything else we want to cover? Because I think I got some ideas here. No, I, I'm, I think we've covered a lot of the things I had. Um, the timing was the big one, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's, let's do that. So let, let me and, and then and Jeremy talk about this and get back to you with what we think would work. And go from there. Awesome. Okay. Well, I appreciate you guys taking the time. I'm actually, I got to run now and get over okay. to my next class, but I really appreciate uh, talking to you guys and meeting you and looking forward to talking more. That's awesome. Let me ask you quickly, Sam, did, did, did yeah. Jeremy contact you about this? Did you find this independently of Jeremy or was this through Jeremy's contact here? No, this is, uh, it was um, our guidance counselor somehow got Jeremy's flyer for the Bellingham workshop. He forwarded it to me. Nice. I started looking at it and then uh, I think I sent Jeremy an email directly, but nice. then also emailed the general website info as well. Okay. Well, good to know. Okay. Well, Sam, <laughs> yeah. thanks. Thanks so much then. We'll keep talking. Awesome. Have a good day, guys. Thank you. See you, Sam. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jeremy, that's so awesome. Uh, <laughs> we're still recording uh, and um, sharing this wealth of knowledge to the world. So this is, we're developing contacts and, and looks like yeah, like a uh, thing I thought a lot about was economic development councils in different places. And this is right mm -hmm. on. Here's some stakeholders that already are kind of in on the open source microfactory work. And so this is just a great opportunity. So, yeah, I think yeah, for the yeah. islands, especially in that community, they, they are out there a ways. I mean, it's a it's a solid hour, hour and a half by the time you wait for the ferry, just one way. Wow. Um, but the islands themselves are much more connected with the ferry system that moves between the islands. So 
um, there's basically three, you know, three well-populated islands out there, and it'd be really neat to get some of this out there. And I just, I'm kind of excited. No, that's this is really good. I mean, if if they actually have the drive, okay, we're actually going to produce this for autonomy purposes. I mean, that's awesome. That's mm -hmm. you know, that's that's great too. So we, we want to, let's maybe shoot an email back and forth. Like, so we got a, a potential time. Let's think about what the just more specific curriculum and price structure would be on that. So maybe let's bounce that back and forth and, and let's, let's respond to Sam, um, as soon as we can. Okay. Okay. And I sent out the other emails this morning, uh, to, with the info address as the, um, sender and hopefully the respond to address so you may see some you may see some contacts i can see a, a number of people have opened them already nice that's the using mailchimp <laughs> how many people did you have on your list uh i had 88 addresses this I, is I all increased the size of all... the list quite a bit yesterday uh-huh and this is all counselors or stem teachers or so it's mostly um, I added a few career counselors and then I also went and just went directly to the STEM or the CTE staff because um, they're the ones who are really going to get involved. And I wanted to make sure if there was CTE staff that hadn't seen it, that they got this. So Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's a good model for what we need to do in other locations because we're, we're, it's working already. So we got this meeting and <laughs> people are biting. So, yeah, it's just about the outreach and getting this out there. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, any excellent. other thoughts? I think that's it for now. So let's let's think about what what we want to offer for the price structure on this one, and and both agree on that and and go forward with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're thinking you're thinking basically the same two day curriculum as yeah. as what we're gonna do. Essentially the uh, same. So definitely the the intro to OSC collaboration and build on the first day, and then free CAD and design, and possibly the pen plotter on the second yeah. day as well if there's time but yeah yeah i mean we've, i mean that those two days are so good uh, i think they'll get a lot of value yeah. out of it yeah and yeah. with the plotter if we have some of the g-code and stuff ready ahead of time yeah. um we can at least show proof of concept and get it you know get get it in their hands and then hopefully they can go and use it later yeah yep getting people started excellent all right, all right. All right Jared. that's awesome all right good you have stuff. a good day and i'll talk to you later okay take care bye-bye